this morning. Let's just give him all the praise that he deserves. Let's give him everything that, that he desires of us this morning. Let's, let's see what he can rain down in this service today. So if you would join us this morning in praise and worship. Let's go.
I wish somebody would declare that. Declare it as a song of faith. Uh, come on, this is how it's going to be because God is with me. Can you lift up some high praise to the Lord? Lift up some high praise. Hallelujah. And hosannas uh, and glory to the name of Jesus. Uh, he is my constant. Uh, he is my constant. Uh, he's always there. He'll never leave me. He won't forsake me. When I go through the waters, uh, he'll be there. When I stand in the fire, he'll be there because he's always been there. I'll tell you what, for about 30 seconds, for about 30 seconds, now I know everybody knows how to clap. For about 30 seconds, or maybe 45 seconds, or however long, I want us to to put our hands together and lift an incredible ovation of applause for the Lord. Just like if he was walking into this room right now because he's here. Can you lift up? Come on, lift up some high praise. Clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people, and shout. Hey! There's been a lot of times the Lord has stepped into your problem, into your circumstance, and you didn't even know he was there. You could not acknowledge him, but he's in the house right now. And everything he's ever done for me from this moment to the day I was born, I want to praise him for that today. Today. nothing like a praise break time out for praise that song first line if I'm not mistaken says I've ha I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God period don't need anything else I've seen the faithfulness of God I don't praise him because of me I don't worship him it's got nothing to do with me this has got everything to do with him and there's just so many ways that my body and my spirit can let him know I love him and let him know I'm thankful there are those in the room right now that your very existence here is a testimony to the faithfulness of God. Your ability to still walk the earth and breathe in the air is a testimony. I know I quote it often and just get prepared. I'll quote it forever. But the psalmist said, if it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side, when the enemy came against me, he'd have beat me. But the Lord was on my side. And another writer said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And then, of course, the prophet Isaiah, he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper you be seated for a few moments thank you for coming this morning this is time to receive our sunday morning tithe and offerings and uh, as many of you know by now especially for our online community that uh, um, 
We can give in a, in a myriad of ways. We have a giving app that's Givelify that you can give. You can send it in by mail to Riverbend Pentecostals at P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. If you want to do it by way of our website, you can do that. It's riverbendpentecostals.com. We have a link for PayPal. And then in your bulletin today, there is a QR code for Givelify and one for PayPal as well. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that once again this week, we've been hearing testimonies of the faithfulness of God with regard to our finances. Amen. Somebody called me this week and said something to the effect, if the Lord keeps on blessing like he's been blessing, we're going to have a shout down when we pray this prayer because of what it does to our faith. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not belittling your blessing, but it is no big deal for God to bless us financially. It all belongs to him. I said it all belongs to him. Like I read a testimony this week of a church needing to, if I, if I understood it correctly, needing to raise some money in a hurry. And a denominal local pastor of another denomination gave them their very first offering, substantial offering toward meeting that. It'll come from anywhere because it's all his. Amen. The wood grain pans here by either side of the pulpit are for your offerings. The gold pans to the right are for tithing. But I want you to worship as you give. Because it is worship. It is worship. It is a declaration of the faith I have that God's going to keep taking care of me. Amen. It is a manifestation that God has taken care of me. And while you, when you come up, I know we got COVID running around a little bit again and, and, and what have you, but say hi to somebody. Introduce yourself to somebody. Come up here with a smile, especially go back to your seat with a smile. Rejoicing in the Holy Ghost. Rejoicing because we're together. If you see somebody you haven't seen in a while, smile at them real big. Tell them that you love them and you missed them. And because we're way, 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 way better together. Won't you stand with us and let's say this offering declaration and prayer together. If you're new here and this is, this is strange to you, well, welcome to the club. It was strange to us too. But now we know what it does to our faith. Amen. One of these times, we may have to cut out all the lights and get a voice distorter so you don't know who it is. But I'm going to have about eight or ten people who have been blessed. If I told you the things that the Lord did during the pandemic for them, you'd think I was lying. Because I promise CNN, CBS, Fox, and all those other places ain't been talking about our people through the pandemic. Because if they had of, if they had of, the whole world would be feeling a little bit differently. Because God's been good to us. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaking together and running over. I am a tither and I give my offerings. And I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Even if you give on Givelify, get out and walk around a little bit. Tell somebody you're glad to see them. Shake somebody's hand if they feel comfortable. If not, wave at them and smile. We're better together. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails. You'll not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high. Your 
Come on, let's lift him high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing high praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I, I felt before service to share this with you. I taught on faith a couple Wednesday nights ago, Brother Ronnie. Brother Tripp had shared a message with us by Brother Matthew Tuttle. It was called The Characteristics of a Diehard Jesus Fan. This young lady had prayed back through to the Holy Ghost, and she wanted her husband to be saved. Her husband was backslidden. Brother Marcus, she would bring his suit coat and his tie to church, and she would lay it over the pew next to her. And as the Spirit began to move, she would take that coat and she would take that tie, and she began to run the aisles. She was letting her faith work. She was putting her faith in action. That's what it's all about when it comes to prayer is a little bit of faith coupled together with our prayer. And she began to run the aisles with his suit jacket and with his tie. Just a little bit. Guess what? Her husband prayed back through to the Holy Ghost. I said her husband prayed back through to the Holy Ghost because of her faith. But that's not the end of the story. They wanted to have a baby. They couldn't have a baby. She went out and she bought some baby clothes. I'm talking about faith now. I'm talking about faith. She went out and she bought some baby clothes, and she brought those baby clothes to church, Brother Shannon. As the Spirit began to move, she would take those baby clothes, and she would begin to run the aisles. She began to worship. She began to thank God for what he was going to do. She not only had one baby, she had several babies. I'm talking about putting our faith into action. Faith over fear. Putting our faith into action and know that God is able to do what he said he could do in the Bible. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. If you have a need, just make it known by the raising of your hand. Sister Janice, if you would come forward as we pray. She's got a bad uh, a report from the doctor. I believe they found a lump. And we want to believe for Sister Janice that God's going to take care of that, right? We're together. We're better together as one, as Brother GL said. And we're going to anoint her. Brothers, if you would gather around, we're going to anoint her and pray by faith. That God's going to take care of this situation and we're going to pray for your needs this morning. That God's going to take care of all of them. Lord, we pray right now, God. Lord, that you touch Sister Janice, God. Right now, Lord, that your healing work is going to flow through her body, God. Lord, you touch that strike for the healing, God. I'm praying that in Jesus. Thank God for each now, God. They touch your healing, God. Let it be God, Lord. I know this man, Lord, Lord, Lord. Each and every one of these things, God, you know me here in the beginning, God. Lord, you know what we have need of before we ask in our prayers, God. Lord, our lost loved ones. God, that prodigal that's walked away, God, we put our faith, God, that you're going to come back, God, that you're going to be saved, Lord, in Jesus' name, that your will will be done, Lord. These are the sick in body, God. Sister Sarah needs a touch. My wife needs a touch, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Touch the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. God, praise God, praise God. Pray for this baby right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord, right now, God. Lord, we're releasing faith, God. Lord, that you would reach out and touch this child right now, God. Lord, you know the end from the beginning, God, and we place our faith, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we pray, Lord, God, that you would touch her, Lord, that your healing works would flow, God, from the top of her head to the soul of her. Oh, God, that in her mind, God, would be covered, her, God. Lord, that you would put that helmet of salvation on her head right now, God. Oh, God, to block the fiery darts of the wicked, God, that you would give us this, God. Lord, that you would give her peace of mind, God, a peace of heart, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name, right now, God. Yes, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Faith over fear, Lord, in Jesus' in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. Praise is 
Just for a moment, everybody lift your hands and just magnify the Lord in this place. Can we do that? Just lift your hands and praise Him. Open your mouth and magnify the Lord in this place right now. His Spirit is in this place to do a work today. Are we going to let Him? 
Oh, we're going to let him. God, we magnify you. We praise you, O oh Lord, and we bless you. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast of the Lord. God, I'm going to praise you no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance. God, you are worthy of my praise. Come on, lift your voices. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and magnify him. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sister Heidi, can you put that chorus of that song up there just one more time? And I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. And I'll praise you whether I'm happy and I'm going to praise you if I'm sad. I'm going to praise you in all that I go through. Because praise is what I do. That means it's my choice, Brother Shannon, to sit in my molly grubs, to worry about what I'm going through, or it's my choice to praise him in every situation, Brother Richard. It's my choice. And I ask somebody in this place today to make the choice, no matter what you're facing, to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Make the choice to open your mouth and bless his name. Make the choice to praise him. No matter what you feel like, no matter what you're going through, open your mouth and magnify the Lord in this place today because he is worthy of my praise. He is worthy of my praise. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you. I like what I feel in the house this morning. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and I'll be reading this morning in the King James Version. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and it says this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Just for a moment in time, if you'll bear with me this morning, I'd like to speak just for a moment. I will turn aside. Pastor, would you pray please, sir? Amen. Turn around and give somebody a fist bump and you may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. By all accounts, Moses should not be standing where he was standing. Brother Ronnie's standing on the backside of the desert watching somebody else's sheep. He's watching his father-in-law's sheep and he had just spent 40 years of his life, his early life, living in the palace. Of all the luxuries, all the great things, all the, the money that he could have, all the clothes that he wanted, everything that he wanted. He had every luxury, Brother Blake, the luxuries of a king. But now he sat on the backside of a desert watching somebody else's blessing, watching somebody else's sheep. You see, Moses was not born into a royal family, but shortly after his birth, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He was raised as a member of Pharaoh's household. He was raised as part of the elite of the elite. He had, like I said a while ago, everything at his disposal, Brother Terrence. Everything that he needed was right there. He had a royal education. And we know this because Acts 7, Stephen tells us, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and mighty words and deeds. They, they revered him. They looked at him. He wasn't just an average guy, Brother 
uh, trip, but he was living in the house of Pharaoh. He had some clout, if you will. He had some power, if you will. He was a special kind of guy. But now he found himself on the backside of the desert looking at somebody else's sheep. Sitting there wondering, what in the world am I doing here? Why am I in this situation? Why am I in the middle of this circumstance? Why am I facing what I'm facing? I should be living in the house of Pharaoh, but here I sit watching somebody else's sheep. Moses lived a life of privilege, but he knew from a young age that he was not Pharaoh's child. He knew that he was a Hebrew. And one day as he was walking around, Brother Tripp, he seen an Egyptian beating up on a Hebrew and he slay him. He slew that man and now he found himself furthest away than he ever thought possible. You see, no matter what he went through, Brother David, no matter what he faced, no matter how powerful he was, nothing, nothing, nothing would keep him from being put to death if Pharaoh would have found him. But now he found himself. In the back side of the desert, all alone, all by himself, all weary and worn out. Moses ran away from furthest as he could from what he had known. You see, he was at his wit's end. And we heard Brother, Brother Burke teach not too long ago. It was at the wit's end that he had an encounter with God. One encounter with God. One encounter with God. With God, if you will, Sister Heidi, put verse 1 back up there, 1 and 2. It said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock on the backside of the desert, and he came to the mountain of God, even unto Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and was not consumed. Now Moses, we know the beginning of his life, Brother David, he'd spent about 40 years in the palace. Now he had spent about 40 years in the desert, on the backside of the desert. So there's no doubt in my mind that in about 40 years' time, he'd seen a bush fire every once in a while. He'd seen a fire every once in a while that just spontaneously combusted, the lightning or something happened. This was not a, a new occurrence, but something was different with this situation. Something was different with this fire. Because in the middle of this fire as it burned in the bush, the Bible says that he looked at this bush and he saw that it was not consumed. He saw that this bush, this fire, that this burning was different. I read a little bit further as Moses is giving a blessing to the nation of Israel prior to his death in Deuteronomy 33 and 16. He says this, And for the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush... Let the blessings come from the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. So I looked up what that him that dwelt in the bush means. And it means S-A-K-A-N pronounced Shakan in Hebrew. It means to reside or to stay. It's also the word where Shekinah comes from. The Shekinah glory. So Moses just didn't see a fire in the bush. He saw the glory of God in the bush. He saw something burning that was not normal. He saw something happening that was not a normal situation. He saw something burning that was not a normal situation. The glory of God that Moses saw burning in the bush was the same glory that a little bit later would be between the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. Moses, Moses, look, take your shoes off, fella, because you're on holy ground. This ain't a normal situation that you're walking into, but this is the anointing and the power and the Spirit of God that will change your life, that will shake up every single situation that you've got going on in your life. If you learn to look to me and seek me and find me. Hallelujah. When Moses saw the glory of God shining in the bush, he couldn't help but turn aside. See, Brother Tripp, you can, you can live the life of, of obscurity all your life. You can think no one sees me. No one knows me. No one knows what I'm going through. I'm just doing what I'm doing. But when you look to the Lord and when you allow the Spirit of God in your life, Brother Shannon, that tells you to turn left on the road when you have no idea why, that tells you to take a shower when it don't make no sense, because something is happening in your life and God is prepping you and God is proving you and God is making you a vessel worthy of His Spirit 
because one day somebody's going to look at you, Brother Terrence, and they're going to say, I don't know what it is about that fire and that man, but that's something that I ain't never seen before. That's a situation that I ain't never been in before. That's an anointing that I want in my life. That's an anointing that I got to have. I don't understand it. I can't see it, but I want it. I want it. I want it. I looked at my brother. I look at my sister. I look at Brother Shannon. I'm using you as an example, Brother Shannon. But people look at you and they say, well, he messed up before. He made mistakes before. I look at Brother Larry. He made a mistake before. I wonder how long it's going to be before he does it again. But then they keep looking. They keep looking. They keep looking. They say, I don't know what happened this time that didn't happen last time. But there's something different in that man right now. There's a different anointing upon the head of my brother. There's a different life that he's living right now. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes the difference. Moses said in verse 3, and I will now turn aside and see this great sight. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. I pictured Moses when I was young. I don't know why I got it on this. Maybe it was a Moses movie I watched when I was little. I don't know. But I pictured Moses walking with a sheep, weary, tired upset, mad, sitting there carrying his staff, and he walked by the burning bush, and the burning bush just sparked into fire, and God said, Moses, Moses. But that ain't what happened. I read what happened in the Word of God. That's why it pays to know what the Bible says for yourself. That's why it pays to open it up for yourself. Don't listen to what I'm telling you. Bust it open for yourself and realize that God can change your life no matter what you face. No matter what you go through, God can fix your situation. Brother David, but here's what happened. Moses, sitting in his despair, sitting there on a rock. I'm just adding some, uh, some of my thoughts. But he's sitting there, Brother Ronnie, sitting on this rock, looking at somebody else's sheep. You know, 40 years ago, I sit here, or I sit in a palace. I had it made. I was drinking the best water. I was eating the best food. I was doing this. But my mama had to tell me that I was not a Pharaoh's kid. My mama had to tell me that I wasn't what I thought I was. So I tried to stand up for those that I thought I was going to stand up for. And now look where it got me. On the back side of the desert. I'm a no man. Nobody wants me. Nobody wants me on this side of the fence. Nobody wants me on that side of the fence. But here I sit. All alone. Weary. Worn out. Tired of fighting. Tired of going through my situation. Tired of going through my circumstance. And then in the middle of it I open my eyes on a hill and I see a bush burning with a fire that ain't never burned before and I say I I I will make the decision to turn aside and see this great sight I'm going to head toward the thing that is changing my life I'm going to look to the thing that will change my situation it is the anointing power of the Holy Ghost that changed your life. It's not a hype. It's not just something that makes you feel good. It's the anointing that changes you. Sister Heidi put verse 4 up there. And when the Lord saw. Oh. When the Lord saw. I have your attention. My Jesus. When the Lord saw that he had the attention of Moses, he said, okay, buddy, now you ain't worried about the situation you're in. Now you ain't looking at what you've always been looking at for 40 years. You've been wondering why you were here. Now you took your eyes off of that situation and you look to me. And now that your eyes are on me, I'm going to call you with an anointing. I'm going to place something in you that's going to change not only your life, but every single body you come in contact with. God called to him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. Here I am, Lord. I hear you now. I see you now. I understand it now. I didn't understand it then, but I got it now, Lord. It wasn't until Moses made the decision in his mind 
to go and see that God spoke to him. How serious am I to hear the voice of God? How serious am I to see the miraculous? He's already promised it to us. He's already promised a revival. He's already promised healings, signs, and wonders. Look, we are not chasing after those things, Brother Richard. They're chasing after us. If we got the mentality to believe that we keep our eyes upon the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I remember hearing a message not too long ago because of the times. And it was a story of a, a brother was telling. He was telling about his father's church. And he said, in my dad's church, there was this lady. Taught Sunday school for years. Carried her Sunday school book. And she taught Sunday school for a long time. All by herself. Her husband wouldn't come. Kids come every once in a while. I had two beautiful girls. They wouldn't come. But by herself. She put that book on her. And she'd go teach. And she'd go teach them babies. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. They teach them about Moses. She'd teach them about Noah. She'd teach them about the burning bush. She'd done everything she could to impart wisdom. That she was giving into the life of those children. But year after year. Prayer after prayer. Tear after tear, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And she was weary. She was tired. She was broken. And one day on a Monday morning, she knocked on her pastor's door with that book under her arm. And she said, can I speak to you? And he ushered her into his home with his wife. And he said, yes, ma'am, what do you need? And she said, for years, it's felt like I pulled this way. And my husband has pulled that way. And we just can't get on the same page. And I'm tired of fighting it. I'm tired of going through what I've been going through. I'm tired of all the tears and nothing happening. So I'm turning in. I'm turning in my Sunday school book because I can't do it anymore. She said, I'd bring my babies to church one Sunday. And for the next four or five Sundays, my husband would take them to fun things. He'd take them to the rodeo. He'd take them to the movies. He'd take them to the park. Just anything he could do to keep their attention, to keep them out of the house of the Lord. And she said, I'm tired of fighting it. I'm tired of going through it. I can't do it anymore. She said, but I love you. And I love this church. And I love God. I just cannot do it anymore. And she laid that book down and pushed it to her pastor. And he looked at her and he said, if you love me, like you say you love me, if you care for this church and for the Lord like you say you do, I got one thing I want you to do. And she said, what's that? And he pushed that book back. He said, I want you to teach one more Sunday. And she looked at him with disbelief. I'm, I'm, I'm turning in my resignation. I just told you I had nothing left. And you're telling me to give it one more shot? I ain't got nothing in me, Pastor. One more shot? One more press? One more time? And she said, because I love you, because I care for you, because I honor the Lord, I'll give it one more shot. And she said, but Monday after this coming up Sunday, I'm done. I'm giving you this book back. And she placed it under her arm, and she walked out of the house. She studied that week just like normal. But on Sunday morning, she got up. She was getting ready for church. She was fixing her hair. She picked up her Sunday school book, and her husband walked in the room. He said, honey, have you seen my suit? And she said, no, I don't know where it's at. Why? He said, do I, do I have a clean white shirt? She said, I'm sure, but why? He said, are my black dress shoes shined up? And she said, I'll shine your dress shoes. Just explain to me why you want this stuff. And she said, he spoke to her and said, I was sitting in my chair yesterday. And I begin to think that all of these years, you've been pulling this way. And I've been pulling this way. And what's going to happen if we get on the same page? So I walked into the room yesterday and I told our babies, why don't you get up tomorrow morning and get your clothes on because we're going to go to church with mama. There's about to be some changes in this place. There's about to be some changes in the life of this family because I am making the decision to turn aside and see the salvation of God. I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody in this place would make a decision to look to him for which cometh your strength, 
to keep your eyes upon the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's no telling what's going to happen in your home. No telling what's going to happen in your job. No telling what's going to happen in this church. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and magnify Him. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Many times in life, just like Moses, and I heard Pastor mention it Wednesday night, and I told him about it. God calls us in the furnace of our affliction. Right smack dab in the middle of our mess, he shows up. Got three Hebrew children walking. I don't care what you do. You can play that song a thousand times. We ain't bowing. We ain't giving up. We ain't quitting. Well, you're getting thrown into the fire. Well, so be it. So in the middle of the fire, guess what? Guess who showed up? He said he looked down in the fire. And hey, didn't we throw three of them in there? But there looks like to be a fourth man walking in the fire. There's something different about this situation. There's something different about this circumstance. It's the anointing of God when you realize that I will turn aside and see the salvation of God in my life. I will make the choice, Brother Richard, to do what God has called me to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17 and 20, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Old life has gone and new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us, he's given who? He's given who? He's given us the task of reconciling people back to him. God was in that burning bush. God was in that man, Christ Jesus. And God lives with inside of me. And he gave me power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by enemy hurt me. Nothing that we face will destroy us if we look to him. God is in us. Jesus told him, he said, I'm with you now. But I shall be in you. What's that mean? That means if he's in me, Sister Jane, I got to act like he did while he was on this earth. I got to do what he did while he was on this earth. And what did he do? He seek and save that which was weary, broken, the hurt, those nobody else wanted. He said, I'll go by there. I'll check them out. I give them a hug when nobody else will. I tell them I love them when nobody else will. I pat them on the back and encourage them when nobody else will. I'll be what he's called me to be when nobody else will because it's a decision that I've made for myself that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is, man, I love this. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ. When we plead, Brother Ronnie, come on back to God. That means when I open my mouth, Brother Terrence, and I say, hey, won't you come go with me? Why don't you come go with me? I know a man that can change every situation that you've ever been through. I know a man that tells me all that I've done wrong, but he loved me. I know a man that loves me in spite of me, that loves me no matter how many times I fail, no matter how many times I've made mistakes. No matter how many times I've been broken, he loves me for me. We know the Spirit of the Lord Jesus said in John 6 and 44, No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draws him. That being said, i got a question for you. What would happen in this place if some of us got the mentality, Don't worry about it, Jesus. You just get them near me. Don't worry about it, Jesus. I got this for you. You just get them near me. I'll make room in my schedule for them. I'll make sure that I lift them up and I won't tear them down. I'll make sure that I prepare the way for them. I'll make sure the coffee pot's on. I'll make sure the baptistry's warmed up. I'll make sure the church is clean. I'll do whatever I got to do to put my hand in the fire to reach them. Because now I know that it's my job. Now I know no matter what I've messed up at in life, 
no matter how many times I failed or faltered, now I know that I'm the one through you, Lord, that can plead to them. Why don't you come on back? Why don't you come on back? Why don't you look to the Lord? Because he can help you out of every situation. I heard last night, life begins at the end of my comfort zone. Life begins at the end of my comfort zone. Just think of that sweet lady that carried that book all those years. The devil tried everything he had within him to get her to quit because he knew she was right on the precipice of an anointing revival in her home that nothing was going to change. And she knew that he, he knew if he could get her to quit, then her husband wouldn't make it. He knew if he could get her to give up, Brother Chance. He knew if you could get discouraged. He knew if I could get discouraged. He knew if he could play tricks on your mind. He knew if he could kick you around and bust you around a little bit in the middle of your situation that you possibly would give up. But here, O Israel, the name of the Lord our God is one Lord. And I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift him up no matter, like the song says, what I go through. No matter what I face. No matter what happens in my life, I will praise the Lord. And I will bless the Lord. And I will magnify Him. Because it is in the middle of my affliction, in the middle of my circumstance, in the middle of hell on earth, that I'm turning my eyes to Him. And I'm not worrying about this decision any longer. I'm not worrying about the pain any longer. I'm not worrying about the hurt any longer. I'm not worried about whatever I face any longer. But I'm looking to Him, the author and the finisher of my faith. And I'm looking to Him who can change lives. I'm looking to Him that can mend the brokenhearted. I'm looking to Him that can set captives free. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Closing today. There was a man taking a walk on a beach. Sister Amanda, as you're coming. He saw that along with the morning tide came hundreds and hundreds of starfish. And when the tide receded, they were littered all over the beach. He knew that in the morning sun rays, something didn't happen. That every one of those starfish was going to die. So he knelt down with Ronnie and he picked up one starfish. And he flung him out there into the water. He walked a little bit and he knelt down and he picked up another starfish. And he flung him out there into the water. There's a man jogging on the beach. He looked at him and he stopped. He said, what in the world are you doing? Don't you realize that you cannot possibly save all of these starfish? He just discouraged him and complained the whole time. This man was walking, picking up this starfish, and he sling another one out in the water. He'd walk a few feet, he'd grab another one, and he'd sling it in the water. He said, of all these thousands of starfish, you really think it matters? You really think it helps? The man knelt down and he grabbed one more starfish and he slung it again. He said it helped to that one. It mattered to that one. It matters everywhere I place my hands. I can't reach them all, God, but you can. You're going to use my mouth. You're going to use Brother Ronnie's mouth. You're going to use Brother David's mouth. You're going to use Brother Terrence's mouth. And if we all grab a handful of starfish, guess what? We can reach them. We can reach them. We can reach them. But we've got to reach them. We've got to reach them. Don't worry about it. Just open your mouth. Don't worry about it, Brother David. Just keep on plugging along. Don't worry about it, Brother Austin. Just keep on fighting. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. If we'd all stand in the house this morning. I don't want you to be weary. You might invite eight people to church and none of them show up. That's all right. You might teach 10 Bible studies. Nothing happened. That's okay. It don't matter what you do. It don't matter what you go through. No matter how many times you think you failed, you just keep on plugging along. Keep on casting your bread upon the water because it's going to come back. I know one thing from, from being a young man starting a lot of fires when I was little and, and campfires and stuff. When I have everything dry, it don't take nothing for it to burn. I can light it up, blow on a little bit, throw it in there. And Some people you come in contact with, 
are just like that. You say one thing and poof, they got it. But guess what? There comes a time when I walk to a brush pile or I walk to some wood and it's wet. And it, 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 it's, it's not dry and perfect. But you know what I do then? I pile it up. And I take a little bit of what I've had put up. A little dry tender. And I get that little coal going. Brother Robbie, I blow on a little bit. And I get down there and I baby it. And I talk to it. And I breathe. And I blow until that coal gets bigger. And that coal gets bigger. Sometimes the person we're talking to looks like they ain't getting it. But you just keep on blowing on the coal. You keep on witnessing. You keep on opening your mouth and allow God to use you. Because pretty soon in the middle of their situation, in the middle of their calamity, the light bulb's going to come on and they're going to see the, the light on the hill. They're going to see the fire in the bush. And they're going to realize, I don't have to worry about this situation I'm in any longer. I don't have to worry about my failures and my mistakes because they don't define me. They don't define me. What defines me is that I am bought with a price. I am chosen of God. I am used of the King of kings and Lord of lords. When I make my decision to turn aside, that will define what God wants to do in my life. So I'm asking somebody in this place today, each and every one of y'all that come, we're not asking you to come up here and snot bubble. If you want to snot bubble, that's fine. But everybody that will, come on up here, and we're going to pray right now that God will call us and God will change us and God will use us to be impactful in somebody's life. Amen? Can you do that? Because, Brother Shannon, we're coming in contact with them every single day. We're coming in contact with them every day. And a lot of time fear comes into play and we're worried about it. That's why it's important when the Lord says turn left on this road. It don't make no sense that you turn left on the road. That's why it's important when God says, okay, get in the shower when you done had a shower and you do it. That's all right. We're going to do it because the anointing power of the Holy Ghost is going to fall in this place. If you believe it, just lift your hands. If we sing this song today, I want you to claim what God is doing in this place right now. I want you to claim right now that God is going to have his way in this place. Speak, Lord. Touch the hearts and the minds of this people. God, I've delivered, oh Lord, what you've given me in this place. And I pray right now, God, the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. God, that you will move under this people's life. That you will move in their hearts. That you will move in their minds. That they will realize, oh Lord, that they are bought with a price. That failures do not define them. Faults do not define them. Hurts and hang-ups do not define them. But God, it's the anointing power of God that worketh in me. It's the anointing that works in me, God, that changes the situation. I pray your will be done in this place right now. In Jesus' name. Come on. Everybody just begin to worship the Lord. Just begin to praise the Lord. Magnify Him. Thank Him for what He's doing in this place. Hallelujah. Find me in the valley Standing with my hands held high The valley will never take my song Find me in the desert, holding on to you for life. The desert will never take my song. No, the desert will never take my song. And I will praise you. I will praise you. Come on, you've been drawn. You've been drawn by what it looks like. Turn aside and he'll speak to you. Turn aside and he'll speak to you. Come on, you've been ministering to him today. You know what it's like to wander in a place and never place it. To wander in a place and never place it. The Lord wants you to know he hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. The Lord is going to speak to you. Through the Holy Ghost, he's going to speak to you if you'll turn aside. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Something's different. Something's different. Come on, why don't you shut your eyes and lift your hands and, and just begin to tell the Lord, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm watching for you, I'm watching for you. Things ain't right here, I don't belong here. I've been here for a time and I've been here for a reason, but it's just a season. I'm coming out, the voice of the Lord is going to speak. You will have my song and I will praise you, I will praise you. That's what 
wanted to preach and said, turn aside and come in the bush. And when you get to the bush, you'll speak. Pray with somebody. Don't the stand there and watch. The Don't stand there and watch. Let's go encourage the somebody. Touch somebody you're glad to see. Go pray the prayer of faith the over somebody. Be, and let, let them see the fire the burning in you. Let them see the fire burning in you.
We just give the Lord some praise right now. Just lift your voices up, lift your hands. Yes, clap your hands unto the Lord. Thankful that one day we turned aside. We were attracted by the bush that wouldn't burn up. And when the Lord got our attention, He spoke to us. What a word from the Lord today. Just a moment. You're all right. You're okay. Um, uh, I'm going to be really quick, but I'm going to try to be really clear. Um, the last two years, we have continued to support every arm 
of ministry that the United Pentecostal Church has. And there are four. There's She's for Christ, which is the youth ministry. There's Mother's Memorial, which is ladies' ministry. There's Save Our Children, which is children's ministry. And there's Christmas for Christ, which is North American missions, which means it goes to plant churches in unchurched areas in the United States and Canada and Mexico to some degree, but not much. Now, beginning in 2015, we pledged and gave $1,500 a piece to each arm of ministry. And it, many of you will recall that we did something called the envelope system. And we tried to modify it a little bit a couple of years. But uh, the best way that it works is we have 100 envelopes that are numbered 1 to 100. And um, I'm asking that this assembly fill those up with $100 per envelope. And at the end of the year, we will, this is not tithing, this is not your regular offerings, this is an additional offering. And if we have 100 envelopes filled with $100 a piece at the end of the year, we will have $10,000 to give to these four arms of ministry. Now, they go to Lighthouse Ranch for Boys, Tupelo Children's Mansion, Foreign Missions, North American Missions, to our, you know, to our missionaries that are abroad and our missionaries. Metro Missions, which is a, missionary, uh, a, a mission that specifically focuses on our metro areas. Everybody with me? All right. Now, um, this year, anybody know what this year is? What's the name of this year? Who said it? 2022. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all didn't realize what I was asking, did you? You thought I was asking a trick question. This is 2022. And so that means what? We're going to give $2,200 at a minimum, $2,200 to each one of these entities. We're going to do it. Now, last year, we gave $2,100 to Mother's Memorial Christmas for Christ and Save Our Children. But our young people got together, along with Brother Richard and Sister Meredith, and we gave, I think, over $4,000, or was it right, $4,000? A little, a little over $4,000 to She's for Christ. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you, I, 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 don't, I should have given this picture to Sister Heidi. But this is just one instance. Last week, um, after a few weeks, I had a man contact me about two or three weeks ago from the Philippines. His name is Ron L. Dense, and he's a 34-year-old pastor. He's contacted Sister Rita, maybe a few other folks, but he's really been attracted to our church. And uh, I got him connected with Sister Iron on Facebook because he doesn't speak very good English, but he and her speak the exact same dialect, and I think he's originally from her same area. But I ran into her at Walmart this week and uh, was able to tell her what was going on. But here's the deal. She's for Christ that we gave $4,000 to. One of their primary uh, missions is to buy automobiles to be used on the foreign fields. Here's why. Brother Dense is married, he and his wife, and they have two children. So that's a family of four. He pastors one hour away up a mountain. Every church service, he and his wife and their two children get on a little dirt bike. And they ride it for one hour to get to church every service. So when we give... Now, I ain't told you what I'm going to ask you to do. But we're going to give still $2,200 to all four of these entities. We already gave one Christmas for Christ. Already done that. 
We gave it through the pandemic and didn't ask you for a dollar, did we? We never missed giving. But I want to give to these missions and then also I'd like to see us buy a vehicle for that family so they don't have to, four of them, get on a little dirt bike and ride to church for an hour, one way, up the mountain. Brother Larry, we can't do it for everybody, but it matters to that one. They have church in a house. They have only music that's a guitar that his wife can play, and it broke. So last week, we bought him a new guitar. But I think before we get done, we can buy him a keyboard, and we'll just have River Bend Philippines section. Why not? Now hear this, in case some of you are looking at me skeptical, like thinking, anybody, he got snowed. No, I asked Sister Irene about it. She said, I told her, I said, there's four people ride that motorcycle. She said, oh goodness. She said, that's how they all live over there. She said, it is nothing to see six or eight people piled on the back of one motorcycle to go to church. It's legit. That's where Sister Irene came from. So, Sister Meredith has the envelopes this morning. And I'm going to ask you as we're dismissed, Brother Blake is getting ready to come. But you don't have to just take one. So, for instance, my family and I are going to take the first five envelopes. So we will, and this is above your tithing and above your extra giving. My family and I will give $500 this year toward this goal. So there's only 95 envelopes left. Now I'm not asking you to raise your hand and tell you how many. I did that so you understand. Because some people have said in the past, well, I'd like to take more, but you said only 100. Well, truth is, if one of you want to go back there and take the whole box, just go on with your bad self. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you something. We've never missed a penny that we gave away. And I'm going to tell you right now. We're fixing to have a business meeting sometime in February when I let you see what's in our general fund. It's going to blow your mind. Not only have we paid our van off, we're paying down on our line of credit, and God has blessed this church with more money than we've ever had. And the reason why is because we keep giving. We cannot shut down the conduit of blessing. And Brother Ronnie, that works because it comes from him, but it goes through us. It's the way it works. So it'll be a little hectic, I know, but so be a little patient. But see Sister Meredith before, if you want to help, see Sister Meredith before you leave today. And all I'm going to ask you is turn it back in as soon as you can. There's not a time limit except December 31st. But turn it in the best you can. I'm telling you, you say, well, what about if two young people want to get one and split it, do $50 a piece, knock yourself out. All right. But I think, I felt like I need to bring it back to the church. We've done it for the last two years without asking for a penny, 20 and 21. And so we're going to start letting you be a part of the blessing. Amen. That's how it works. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he's done in this service today? She's going to want to write your name down. It's why I'm asking you to be patient, okay? Because we're going to keep track of it. Because if you don't be turning your money in, I'm going to be calling you. Some people didn't think that was very funny, but that's the truth. 
I'll just be reminding you that you took an envelope and at the very least give me a penny for the envelope. I'm grateful for what the Lord has done this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for Brother Larry and how faithful him and his family are. Brother, thank you for being obedient to the Lord. What a powerful, powerful word. I'm trying to take my time because I, I, I don't think the Holy Ghost is done moving. I don't think the Lord's done this morning. He's been dropping stuff into my spirit all morning. Brother Larry mentioned, I had to write it down or I, I maybe have chickened out and not said anything, but Brother Larry made the comment about the anointing. It's going to change every single person you come in contact with. He didn't say every other person. He said every single person. And as Brother Larry went on to preach, the Holy Ghost began to bring to my remembrance. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Brother Richard that had the dream or the vision of everyone lining up at the door, getting ready to be healed. Just the other day, Brother GL gives out... Um, prayer guides and I was praying through and one of them was for a greater outpouring of jo Joel 2 and 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh I've, I'm beginning to feel the Holy Ghost I, I have one more thing wrote down here in elements class we always have donuts and coffee and we the church the river bend buys those donuts I don't know if anybody else picked up on it this morning, but there was three boxes instead of two. Amen. And as a church, the church was charged for two. And the Lord's ready to give the increase for however many we bring in. Maybe I'm a little optimistic, but... If we win all every soul in New Madrid, the Lord is willing to bring build us a building big Amen. enough for it to happen. Amen. Just praise the Lord and see what He will do for a moment. Can we just praise Him one more time and see if, if God will breathe in this place and speak to us and give us vision and give us purpose? Because there's people in your life that you're witnessing to. They they see the anointing. They see the name of Jesus all over you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have a few announcements here. Tomorrow night will be focused prayer at 6.30 p.m. and everyone is welcome. Next Sunday is the Secret Sisters. Church cleaning this week. Team number six, the Esther House Girls. Amen. Facebook contest. Anyone who shares our service for each service will be put in a drawing for $25 after March 9th. All names will go in a big drawing for $100. Church, we're doing an unreal amount of views, right? We're re I'm telling you, please, please hear the Lord. There is no limit. There's nothing too hard. All things are possible with the Lord. The next rally will be February 6th in Kennett, starting at 4.54 p.m. Brother Chuck, Brother Chuck Carr will be ministering. You won't want to miss it. You won't want to miss it. On Sunday, March 13th, we will have only one service at 2 p.m. on the Mississippi Riverfront here in New Madrid. This is the Daylight Savings Day. I'm believing for mighty things to impact this community on that day. They're watching, church. Yes. They're watching. I know I keep repeating it, and you're probably thinking I'm crazy, but I think the Lord's wanting to tell us something. Riverbend Kids will be going bowling February, or Sunday, February 13th at 3 p.m., $10 per person. Please let Sister Casey or Sister Kim know by February 2nd. If you are going, bus will leave at 2.15 from the church. And also one more thing, Riverbend Ignited trip this Saturday, February 5th, leaving here at 7 a.m. to go to the City Museum in St. Louis, ages 12 through 18. Bring 30 to $35 for ticket and food, and we need to know by Wednesday who is going. Let Brother Richard or Sister Meredith know. 
And I believe that's all of the announcements. Did we have any birthdays or any anniversaries in the house this week? Days or were, yeah. If all the birthdays would stand and we'll sing to you and to remember Sister Joy Jones, it was her birthday as well. Go ahead. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday. Any anniversary? I thought there was. We can stand as we're about to dismiss. I'm thankful for what the Lord has done and what he's going to continue to do. Brother Tripp, would you dismiss us in prayer this morning, bro? dismissed.